evening people. I'm Pastor Leia and this is my friend Ginger Snap, who is also my co-host. So welcome back to our living room for our Bible study series on the 12 Apostles. It is of course a 15-part uh, series, I believe. Uh, we have another four after this one. So uh, we've been going through them alphabetically and so tonight we have Simon Peter, uh, who is of course also known as Peter the Apostle, Peter the Rock, Simon Peter, Simon Peter, Simeon, or Cephas, because of course he has multiple names. Uh, so um, the original name uh, in the Greek is uh, Simon uh, or Simon. Um, so, but then in in two verses, one in Acts and one in the letter, uh, the second letter of Peter, he is called Simeon instead of Simon. It's like Matthias and Matthias all over again. So why might Simon be called Simeon twice in two random passages? So here, here's, here's my three theories. Theory A, uh, so a newborn son was given a Hebrew name from scripture. Uh, Simeon is one of the sons of Jacob and Leah. Um, but then maybe he would also go by a name that was more like Greek or, or Roman sounding. So Simon, Simeon becomes Simon. Theory B, somewhere along the line, someone accidentally added an extra letter because, you know, Simon is a reasonably common name and Simeon is a reasonably common name. And so I feel like that would be an easy thing to do. And it just kept getting copied. Uh, and theory C, the universe hates me and wants me to have existential crises over the names of apostles. Oh, cool. A vote for theory C from the cat. Anyway, so, uh, Whatever he starts off as, Jesus renames him Cephas, which is Aramaic for rock or stone. Um, New Testament uses the name Cephas nine times, like just by itself, Cephas. Um, but more often, 156 times to be exact, uh, he is referred to uh, as Petros, or in English, Peter, from the Greek word Petra, which is rock or stone. Um, so then to kind of shake things up a bit, in addition to the 156 times when he's called Peter, uh, 19 times he's called Simon Petros, uh, Simon Peter. So uh, he's got multiple names, however you count it. So um, fun fact, I didn't actually know this until today, and I do actually think this is a fun fact. Uh, Petros or Peter had not previously been a, a name, like a, a proper name for a person. Um, but in the Greek-speaking world, it became a popular Christian name uh, after, you know, this particular person who was the first Peter. So he was the first um, in quite a number of ways, including to have the name Petras or Peter. I, I think that's kind of cool. Anyway, he is the brother of Andrew, who was the first apostle that we covered because we're doing these alphabetically. So Peter uh, features prominently in all four Gospels, plus the Book of Acts. Uh, he also comes up in the letters of 1 Corinthians and Galatians. So there's a few scenes in the Gospels that feature Peter, James, <laughs> James the Greater, not James the Lesser, because of course there are two Jameses, um, and John, so Peter, James, and John uh, are with Jesus in a few scenes when the others are off doing something else. Uh, so he was definitely married, but who knows whether his wife was still living uh, during the time of his ministry or during the time of the four Gospels, because that's not mentioned. But we do have um, a short scene in, for example, in Luke, I think it's in three of the Gospels, but from Luke 4, 38-39, uh, after leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked him about her. Then he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Immediately she got up and began to serve them." Uh, also, the, the verb for serve there in the Greek is the same verb that becomes the word deacon. So it's not serving as in like handing a, a tray of like water glasses or whatever, it's serving as in like serving Jesus, following Jesus, um, you know, being part of this whole thing. Um, so, uh, Let's see, I guess it would have made more sense to have had in my notes his call story before the story with his mother-in-law. Hmm. I don't know how my life together. So, um, from uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, 
As Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Uh, so Peter owns the boat that Jesus preached in on occasion. I love how as soon as I pick up the cat or if she jumps on my lap, there's just furs in my lip balm. That's just, it's my favorite thing about having a cat. Um, so anyway, then with, with the name change, uh, for example, in Matthew 16, this is in multiple um, gospels. So Jesus is like, hey guys, uh, who are people saying that uh, the Son of Man is? Which is one of the, the titles for the Messiah. And so the disciples are like, I don't know, like some are saying John the Baptist, and some are saying Elijah's back from the dead, or the prophet Jeremiah's back from the dead, or like some other prophet is back from the dead. Um, and uh, Jesus is like, oh, okay, that's interesting. The, the conclusion is that I'm somebody who's or the Messiah is somebody back from the dead, not somebody new. Uh, so he's like, okay, so who do you say that I am? And Peter pipes up with, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus is kind of stoked and gives them a bunch of extra credit points for getting the right answer. Um, and he says uh, in Matthew 16, and I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Uh, the, the verb um, luo, uh, to loosen or destroy in Greek, it's like uh, the shortest verb, so it was always the example verb for, for different tenses. Anyway, um, if you've studied Biblical Greek, you'd understand. Um, so all four Gospels say that when Jesus was arrested, one of his companions cut off uh, an ear from one of the servants of the high priest. Uh, so John is the only one who says like which follower it was, but John says that it was Peter who was the ear um, cutter offer, is a title now that I'm giving Peter. Um, and then uh, Luke does not say specifically that it was Peter, but uh, I just love the detail in Luke's telling that um, Jesus touches the servant who's just had his ear cut off and then it's, it's miraculously healed, which is a neat little, anyway, that even like during his arrest, he would be thinking of doing that for somebody else who was the servant of like, you know, the, the people arresting him, this, anyway. Um, so uh, after that story, then there was that time that Peter denied Jesus three times. Hashtag awkward. Because um, uh, Jesus gets arrested. So Peter's like hanging out, like trying to figure out what's going on. So he's in the courtyard um, of, of the house of the high priest. And someone's like, hey, weren't you with that Jesus dude who just got arrested? He's like, uh, no, no, just, I'm, I'm just... I'm just warming my hands by this fire. I didn't you know. I'm, uh, and then someone else is like, hey, do, I, I feel like I saw you with that guy before. He's like, yeah, no, 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 uh, no. Uh, and then another person is like, no, you're from Galilee. And I distinctly remember seeing you with that dude. You've got to like be one of his followers. He's like, no, I don't know him. And uh, anyway, it's a whole thing, whole thing thing. Um, so then after that happens, uh, uh, in the Gospel of John, after Mary tells him that the tomb is empty, uh, he's the first person to go inside. Mary saw it was empty first, but he was just the first one to go inside. And then in the final chapter of John, uh, Peter affirms three times that he loves Jesus, uh, which is a nice little um, kind of mirror ending for denying him three times. Uh, and it's different verbs for, for loving also, because there's different verbs for love in Greek. So it's not like, do you love me? Do you love me? In the, anyway. Um, so then in Acts, Peter goes to Samaria with John. He's then arrested in Jerusalem and put into prison by Agrippa before being liberated and going to another place. In, in, in the verse, it says another place, which is 
you know, a great way to leave things open to interpretation. Love it. Uh, in Galatians, Paul mentions that he first met Peter in Jerusalem. And then um, in Galatians, Paul shares a story about Peter in Antioch. So he clearly did some traveling to, you know, another place, multiple another places. Uh, so, scripture doesn't technically say that Peter was ever in Rome. Uh, I guess I hadn't really thought about that before today, but yeah, it never says that he was ever in Rome. <laughs> There's a, a verse or two that you can sort of like interpret that he had at least some like relationship with Rome, like the city. Um, yeah, because he just like so closely associated with Rome and the, the papacy, which we'll, we'll get to. Uh, so in his letter to the Romans, so to the early church in the city of Rome, Paul name drops like 50 some people who are in the church community there, but he never mentions Peter. And you would think that uh, Peter being who he is, he would get name dropped there, but he doesn't. Anyway, Peter is considered to be the first pope. Um, so then any pope after him in the uh, line of apostolic succession is like coming directly after him. Um, so it would be like um, the, the, the line of uh, presidents of a university. Um, you know, it's, there's, there's a direct line, you know, so-and-so was the president and the next person was president. Um, so there's like this direct line, like they have the same office. Um, and like some overlap anyway. Of course, the, I guess it's not really a family tree, but like the, the line of lineage of popes gets um, a little complicated in the Middle Ages, but that's another story for another time. Probably not, because anyway. Um, where was I? Easily distracted. Probably know this about me. Um, yeah, apostolic succession. So it was uh, Peter and then um, Somebody came directly after Peter and someone came directly after him, which was, was Clement, but we're, we're getting there too. Um, so according to tradition, Peter was crucified upside down in Rome uh, under the orders of Emperor Nero in the year 64, uh, specifically because that was the year of the Great Fire of Rome, which was kind of like a big deal. Uh, it was burning for like a whole week, which is like kind of a long time and was pretty widespread and it was kind of catastrophic, um, kind of like the uh, Great Fire of 1666 in London, which is uh, still pretty firmly ingrained in the English consciousness. It is illegal in the city of London to have a thatched roof. There is an exception made for Shakespeare's Globe, but other than that, like since 1666, it's been illegal to have a thatched roof. Um, and my church in Oxford that I attended um, when I was there, we had a fire drill uh, during worship one time because they take fire safety very seriously. Uh, Rome, yes, the Rome fire. <laughs> um, anyway, so you may have heard about a Nero fiddling while Rome burned, which he almost certainly did not, but I mean, it wouldn't have been out of character for him because he kind of was a jerk. Um, yeah, uh, so anyway, after, after the fire, um, Nier was like, hey, it would be convenient for me politically if uh, I could blame this whole fire on the Christians and then I could execute a bunch of them like for funsies and that would be cool. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. Um, uh, I might mention that multiple ancient sources suggest that Nero uh, didn't like necessarily personally set the fire, but may have arranged for the fire to be set to clear room for like an extension to the palace. So it started in I think a shopping district and it just like leveled a whole bunch of the city and then he could have new building projects. So yeah. Uh, so Clement of Rome, who was the third pope, wrote about Peter's martyrdom uh, before he died in 99 CE. Um, so that's like, you know, 30 some years after Peter would have died. So that's, you know, a pretty contemporary source. Um, I don't remember if we have like a year of when he was writing about 
when Peter died, probably not the year that he died. I mean, that Clement died. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's not like a, a scriptural source, but it's definitely contemporary enough that, you know, I'm more inclined to accept that Peter was martyred. Um, <sighs> in a place and time if his contemporaries are writing about it rather than someone like five centuries later who would be like, hey, yeah, this person did this stuff symbolically and it was a whole thing. It's like, no, that's, no, that's not how history works. History doesn't just like appear out of nowhere five centuries later. Um, so there is um, an apocryphal book, uh, The Acts of Peter, uh, which was written in the second century. So definitely a good chunk, you know, after Peter. And again, it's, it's apocryphal, it's not in our Bible. Um, but it is the source um, of the tradition for the Latin phrase, quo vadis domine, which means, where are you going, Lord? So according to the story, Peter uh, is fleeing Rome to avoid execution, which, fair, I would do the same. Um, and then he meets the risen Jesus as he is fleeing the city. And so um, Peter asks Jesus, uh, quo vadis? And Jesus replies, Romam eo iterum crucifigi. I am going to Rome to be crucified again. Uh, so then Peter gains the courage to continue his ministry and returns to the city where he is martyred. It's kind of, it's an odd story to me. Again, it's apocryphal. It's a very dramatic story. And apparently there's some uh, good art of this that I didn't get around to looking up. But uh, yeah, I'm going to Rome to be crucified again. Uh, so you may or may not recall from our very first apostle episode, months ago at this point, uh, that Andrew, who again is Peter's brother, uh, was crucified in an X shape because he considered himself unworthy to be executed the same way that Jesus was. Um, and so the X-shaped cross, the St. Andrew's cross, is the, is the um, flag of Scotland. Uh, so similarly, um, Peter was crucified upside down because he also was like, I'm not good enough to be killed in the same way that Jesus was killed, even though um, crucifixion was a fairly you know, standard uh, practice of execution, which, hmm, anyway. Um, uh, so, uh, getting to relics, because relics are just fascinating, um, either literally pieces of, like, a, a saint or things that they directly interacted with that have been saved through the years. Um, so there supposedly were filings from Peter's chains when he was arrested, and the filings were sent to the King of Northumbria in the year 665. That's, um, I think... The modern area of like northern England, I want to say. Um, and uh, since the 9th century, Peter's skull has been in the Basilica of St. John Lateran in Rome. I don't know where it was before the 9th century. <clears throat> anyway, or at any rate, a skull attributed to Peter has been in. I'm a little skeptical about, you know, 2,000 year old skulls, but that's, that's just me. Um, so, uh, let's see. And a little paragraph from Wikipedia. In 1950, human bones were found buried underneath the altar of St. Peter's Basilica. The bones have been claimed to many to have been those of Peter. An attempt to contradict these claims was made in 1953 by the excavation of what some believe to be St. Peter's tomb in Jerusalem. However, along with this supposed tomb in Jerusalem, bearing his previous name, Simon, not, not Peter, just Simon, uh, tombs bearing the names of Jesus, Mary, James, John, and the rest of the apostles were also found at the same excavation. Though all these names were very common among Jews at the time. <laughs> I love that second part of the sentence. They, they were all common names. Um, so in the 1960s, Items from the excavation beneath uh, St. Peter's Basilica were re-examined, and the bones of a male person were identified. A forensic examination found them to be a male of about 61 years of age from the first century. This caused Pope Paul VI in 1968 to announce them most likely to be the relics of the Apostle Peter. Truly really sounds like a stretch to me. Because I feel like, you know, there were multiple male persons of about the age 61 in Rome 
in the first century. But <clears throat> to be fair, that Pope would have had access to all of these scholarly findings of the um, archaeological team, and I read a Wikipedia article, so who am I to argue? Uh, so the feast day of Peter and Paul, they share a feast day, which is interesting. Um, so their feast day is June 29th in the Catholic Church. And also in the Orthodox calendar, they don't usually match up, like even the dates of Easter in the Western and Eastern churches, we don't have the same Easter. And um, all these other um, apostles that we've talked about, there's been a different uh, feast day in the Western church and the Eastern church, but Peter and Paul, they have the same day, June 29th. I think that's kind of cool. <clears throat> uh, let's see, one of the um, Orthodox titles used for Peter is Corypheus. I'm not sure what language that's in, um, which could be translated as choir director or lead singer. I really like that. It's like, um, like an image of Peter leading a whole like heavenly choir of people singing praises to Jesus because of how influential Peter has been. I think it's a really cool image. Um, so incidentally, there are two epistles of Peter that are in the Bible. Uh, but for a number of reasons, scholars mostly understand that they were written by someone else later who was a follower of Peter. Um, they're uh, not written in the style of a fisherman who spoke Greek as his like second or third language, shall we say. They're, they're well written in a very kind of scholarly Greek. Um, in art, Peter usually has a white beard and is often uh, balding and has white hair. Um, in particularly in art that is like uh, located in the city of Rome or was made there, he might have one or two keys hanging from his belt, which kind of represents uh, the papacy, the, the keys to the kingdom of heaven, um, which um, that, that like in, in particular is, is like a Rome thing, uh, like a Rome church thing rather than like a anywhere else church thing, like anyway. Um, other images may include uh, the reversed cross upside down, papal vestments, because he was the first pope. He would not have been wearing, you know, the big mitre and all the robes and stuff, because that was, you know, later additions to the, the papal wardrobe. But uh, anyway, um, there might be a cornerstone, because, you know, he is the rock on which the church was built, or a haddock. And I had to, like, Google that, because I was like, that, that's a fish, right? That seems very specific. A haddock, not like, I don't know, a trout or a salmon or a goldfish or a, a haddock specifically. Anyway, um, I definitely couldn't identify any fish other than a goldfish, probably, if you showed me a picture of them. Hmm, anyway, a haddock specifically. So uh, Peter is the patron saint against fever and foot problems and frenzy. He is also the patron saint of bakers, brickmakers, bridge builders, butchers, clock or watchmakers, cobblers, fishermen. The fishermen I get because he was a you know a fisherman and a fisher of men. I don't really get the the baker. Um, also the patron saint of harvesters, locksmiths. I mean I guess because like he was arrested and like in chains and then liberated. That could be a locksmith connection. Uh, longevity, which I feel like it would make more sense for that to be John, because he's the only apostle who, you know, allegedly got to die of old age. But sure, Peter's the patron saint of longevity. Um, also, Masons, because he's the rock on which Jesus will build the church. So, Masons! I, I think that's kind of a clever one. Um, so, net makers also makes sense. Uh, patron saint of the papacy, totally makes sense. And the patron saint of shipwrights, which also makes sense to me. Don't understand how like clocks and shoes and bricks and bakers get in there, but anyway. Um, yeah, so that is uh, that's Peter. He, he's, he's a big one, uh, pretty much. Um, he, uh, in any list of the apostles, he's always first. Um, are you coming? You're coming back. Come here. Come here. Come here. He's gonna sit on the floor and meow at me. Um, 
yeah, anyway, that's Peter. Uh, so until next time, have a good evening, peoples. Good night.